cry out with joy to God all the earth, or sing to the glory of his name, or render him glorious praise. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today's Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of his Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh. My dear brothers and sisters, in order to celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendour of the Father, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold, when he said through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you released me. Have mercy and hear me. It is the Lord who grants favours to those whom he loves. The Lord hears whenever I call him. The light of your face on us, O Lord. What can bring us happiness, many say. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of St. John. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, 
refusing to admit the truth. But when anybody does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, explain the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn within us as you talk to us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, Why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it, and they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything to eat here? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, This is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that, in his name, Repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Time plays a fundamental role in our lives. When we have been disappointed by someone, we need time to recover our trust in them. When we have received dramatic news, we need time to process it and deal with it. When we have felt abandoned by God, perhaps we need time to rediscover hope in him. The events that we've celebrated over the last couple of weeks, the events of Easter, show how the disciples also needed time to accept a new perspective, to remember, to think through what they had lived, to reread recent events, and finally come to belief, come to faith. Faith in the Lord is never a magical or immediate fact, but it's the fruit of a journey. And that journey doesn't just have ups, but it's made up of doubts, questions, uncertainties, and hard times. The Gospel of Luke, which we read this Sunday, continu continues, rather, to tell us about these questions. Despite the news having arrived of Jesus' resurrection, the disciples are described in the act of talking to one another. They're discussing and reasoning. They're not presented as ideal believers, who believe and accept what they've heard straight away. In fact, all of them, as I said last week, will make their own independent and different journey to arrive at believing in the risen Lord. For all of them, as it is for us, it will be a journey from which we're not sheltered from doubts, but rather, hopefully, this journey will lead to an experience of an encounter with the Lord. And even if we're having a hard time believing, even if we're wrapped by doubts, we're reassured that the Lord never gives up on us, even in our moments of disbelief. In fact, this seems to be what happens in the gospel. Jesus enters into the disciples and into our own reasonings, into our own confusion. He almost seems to get in the way he resumes his proper place in our lives 
and in our community. As we know, we have a hard time as human beings trusting, and doubts and fears can push Jesus from the center of our heart because we focus on other concerns. But even in this case, once again, we shouldn't lose hope, for we, like the disciples, sometimes don't immediately recognize the role the Lord is taken in our life, precisely because we're taken up by anguish and sadness. And when these emotions dominate our hearts and our lives, sometimes, like described in the gospel, Jesus seems to us as a ghost, a ghostly figure in our lives. And what do I mean by that? Well, a ghost, not being made of flesh and blood, is in ineffective presence. It's a fantasy. And it's interesting that fantasy and phantasm, which is another word for ghost in English, as you know, share the same origin. It means something that isn't real. Probably for us, at many moments in our lives, Jesus has seemed not really present. He seemed like a ghost, a memory, an image, an ineffective presence. We think that the Lord is only the fruit of hope. We would like him to exist in our life, but in reality, sometimes we feel nothing. And this is the opportunity the enemy takes. He takes the opportunity to persuade us that in reality, it is only our hope that makes us believe that Jesus really pre is present, really does exist in our lives. Believing that Jesus is like a ghost means we think that he cannot really intervene and change our lives. And when this happens, sadly, the Lord simply becomes a symbol, a cultural icon, an element of identity. You know, we turn up to Mass every Sunday, perhaps even one we can pray to and complain to. But in the depths of our heart, if he's only a ghost, all this is useless because he can't make changes. He can't make a difference. And this sounds all rather depressing. But the heart of the disciples, which each and every one of you are, coming to Mass and being Catholics, is often a confusing place, a mixture of feelings. In Luke's Gospel just today, that short passage I read to you, there's many emotions. Shock, fear, they're troubled, they're doubtful, and then they feel joy and amazement. And when all these different emotions combine together, they create within us, and we've all experienced this, an emotional storm. How can we, when we've got all these conflicting feelings, recognize ourselves? Our hearts are often full of different feelings, even towards the Lord himself, to God himself. Saint Ignatius, one of my favorite saints, the founder of the Jesuits, called these feelings motions because they push us in one direction or another. And it's very important for us as Christians, people who pray, to stop, reflect, and think what moves inside us. It's important to recognize what thoughts are behind our feelings. And thus, we can discern whether these feelings come from God or if they come from the evil one who wants to take advantage of our fears to bring us away from the good. The Lord knows we need to feel his presence and to be helped to recognize him. So he does this in the gospel today with his disciples. He makes himself recognized and he does it in two very significant ways. He does it by showing his wounds and sharing a meal. Jesus shows his wounds to us because they tell of the love that he has for us. Those wounds, as well as ours, are never useless. They're signs of a love story. Jesus makes himself known as the one who has suffered for us. The second gesture, as I said a few seconds ago, is sharing, eating together. It's a sign of familiarity, but above all, it is a gesture that refers back to the upper room, 
to the place where the Lord and the disciples lived together and to the place where he gave them his body and blood, as he'll do for us this evening. These two signs, his wounds and sharing a meal, shed light on history. They open our minds and they invite us to reread what has happened. And this is a journey and it takes time. But Jesus invites the disciples to remember the words they have heard, the journey they walked together with him. Above all, the disciples back then, and we disciples in the modern times, are invited to reread and reconsider the passion of Jesus, his death on the cross and his resurrection. We need time, but only through this journey can we become witnesses. And this is precisely the task that the Lord wants entrusted to us, simply to tell what we have lived. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. graciously listen to the prayers and supplications of his beloved son may now be pleased to look upon us in our loneliness for the shepherds of our souls that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd lord in your mercy for the whole world that it may truly know the peace given by christ lord in your mercy for our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them. Lord, in your mercy. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. For Her Majesty, the Queen and the Royal Family during this period of grief, that the Lord may offer them consolation and strength. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the repose of His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. We join our prayers to our ladies as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed are Brahmins women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that we come for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Marcus our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, through the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Christ had to suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. In his name, repentance and remission of sins must be preached to all the nations. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. the body of Christ. 